Welcome back to A History of the Navy in 100 Objects, where today we will be talking about the captured British battle ensigns that line the inside of Mahan Hall and Mahan Auditorium here at the U.S. Naval Academy. Most of the ship flags here in Mahan were captured during the battles of the War of 1812. We are joined by Mr. Jim Cheevers, Senior Curator at the U.S. Naval Academy Museum, for more details. Uh, our Congress in 1814 actually passed a law that all flags captured from the enemy by the Navy would be preserved and sent to the Secretary of the Navy's office in Washington for preservation and future use. And in 1849, President James K. Polk signed an executive order transferring that collection to the care and use of the superintendent of the new Naval School in Annapolis, now known as the U.S. Naval Academy. So we have quite a few captured enemy flags. We have 32 uh, British flags from our War of 1812. Uh, behind me uh, currently is a lion that was taken out of the Houses of, of Parliament of Upper Canada in York, now known as Toronto, Canada, in April of 1813. It was a joint Army-Navy expedition uh, to capture the capital there, and uh, uh, General uh, Zebulon Montgomery Pike led the Army forces, and Commodore uh, Isaac Chauncey, the Navy forces that were successful uh, in capturing both the lion behind me out of the, it's an English lion with its uh, foot raised on a globe, uh, and also they took the flag that was flying from the top of the building that day, which is the only captured royal standard. A ship ensign is a large flag used to determine nationality, still used today, but particularly useful in the age of sail when communicating from a distance was a problem for ships. They were also used for what's called denial and deception, where a ship would fly a U.S. ensign, for example, to disguise itself until just before the battle when it would change its flag to fly a British or French flag. Perhaps you've seen this concept played out in the Russell Crowe movie, Master and Commander. There are two flags we will be focusing on today, those of the Cyan and the Levant, both captured on the 20th of February in 1815 by Captain Charles Stewart of the USS Constitution. It is called the Constitution's finest fight, although perhaps it would have been more notable if it hadn't occurred after the signing of the Treaty of Ghent, effectively ending the War of 1812. Captain Charles Stewart assumed command of the Constitution on the 24th of June in 1813, one of the most experienced captains at that time at 35 years old. His mission began on the 17th of December in 1814, when he got underway under threat of challenging Sir George Collier's squadron that consisted of the HMS Leander, a 50-gun frigate, the Newcastle, a 60-gun frigate, and the Acosta, a 40-gun frigate. The purpose of this mission was to find and take the American super frigates that were attacking British commerce. Stuart approached the European coast looking for convoys and encountered two merchant ships and learned that the Treaty of Ghent had been signed in Belgium. But what Stuart understood about the Constitution, the document, not the ship, was that a treaty was not officially in place until it was approved by the Senate. So he proceeded to Cape Finisterre, Spain. On the 20th of February, he sighted the Cyan and the Levant flying their red ensigns and the Union Jack. He commenced a battle in the dusk of that day and completed the engagement in the evening. At a later court-martial, the captains of the two British ships were exonerated by, quote, the superior force of the enemy's ship, aided by his superior sailing. On the 10th of March, Captain Stewart was at anchor in neutral territory in Cape Verde. The following morning, through the fog and haze, the Constitution sighted Collier's squadron entering the harbor. Captain Stewart immediately got the Constitution underway with the Cyan in tow, but the Levant was lost and taken by the British as a prize. Stewart really bookended the War of 1812. This was the last major engagement of the War of 1812, but at the beginning of war, Stewart and Captain William Bainbridge approached President James Madison and convinced him to send the ships to sea to engage with the British. This was contrary to the Secretary of Treasury, Albert Gallatin, 
who suggested that the ships be holed up in New York until the end of the war. Stewart's influence extended from the decision to send U.S. ships to sea at the beginning of the war to leading U.S. success on the seas at the end of the war. Captain Stewart went on to command several squadrons until 1860. Earning his commission in 1798, Stewart had a 62-year career, one of the longest naval careers in U.S. history. Woven into each of the battle ensigns on display in the Han Hall are rich stories of bravery, consequence, and history. On your next visit to the U.S. Naval Academy, stop by Mahan Hall to see the flags and stop by the museum to hear the stories they tell. Thank you for joining us this week and stay tuned for more episodes of A History of the Navy in 100 Objects.